Hello and welcome to Object First Ootby, 15 minutes from box to backup. My name is Matt Price, Manager of Enablement here at Object First. I'm joined with Anthony Cusimano, our Director of Technical Product Marketing. So if you didn't watch episode one, be sure to check that video out on the playlist because that gives you a quick glimpse into what you're going to experience during the unboxing of Ootby. So with this particular video, what we wanna do is pick up where we left off and show you exactly how you configure your initial S3 cluster. So Anthony, what is it that we're looking at here on the screen? Well, we're looking at the text user interface right now, Matt. And the way you get here is if you are following that placard we talked about in the last video, you're going to either go through your DHCP and find the IP address of the box after you've connected it to your uh, larger network configuration, or if you're using a keyboard and mouse locally, you can connect directly through the hardware. And it is important to mention, once you have gotten to the connection screen, it's going to prompt you for a username and password. You will get that by pulling a tab on the front left side of the box. Hey there, hate to interrupt myself, but here I go. I just wanted to pop in and explain further that the pull tab, that actually contains the MAC address of the IPMI network card, as well as the password that you need to log in. The username for IPMI will always be admin in all caps. Now, after you power on OOP, you'll be greeted with the TUI, T-U-I, where you can accept the terms and conditions and begin your setup. I hope that clears things up. Now back to me regularly. Now, what you can see here is our setup screen. There's a, quite a few options. We're gonna focus on the top left-hand corner, set up new cluster. And you may be asking, but Anthony, why am I setting up a cluster? I only have one Ootby node right now. Well, we're gonna make this really easy for you. You're gonna set up a single cluster, a single namespace for your entire Ootby setup. So if you add another node down the line, or three, it is going to be incredibly simple to work those into the existing cluster with no additional configuration or changes needed on yours or Veeam's end. So let's go ahead yeah. and run the setup. Yeah, absolutely. So this is very painless to set up. Uh, essentially, each Ootby node has onboard NICs, so dual NICs, and there's also SFP plus ports. So you can take advantage of your network connections it's simply by setting up a static IP, your subnet mask, your gateway, your DNS. This is all uh, fairly basic from a networking configuration perspective. Now, when we get to the, the cluster IP, we can talk more about this, but what's really nice about having multiple network connections is increased throughput when the Veeam jobs kick off and run. And what's really creative about the way that we built the integration is when you get ready to add this into Veeam, you're only going to use a single IP. Yet Veeam has the intelligence to spread that load across all available network connections. So if you've got, let's say four Ootby nodes in your cluster, that's potentially eight network connections that Veeam can spread that traffic across to really increase that throughput. So as you can see here, we've landed on host name. So this is basically step two, once you set out to create your new cluster, you're simply going to give it a name. And in this case, we had Ootby. In case you guys didn't hear us, we're gonna make sure we say Ootby again and again and again. <laughs> but Remember, after Ootby stands for out of the box immutability. Absolutely, and that is the name of what we're solving. And once you actually set up the host name, it's gonna go through and apply those network parameters that you just set up. And it's also going to go out, and if you did give it internet access, it's gonna check if there's any available updates to the appliance itself. Now, I do wanna mention here, as it goes through this update process, if at any time, either during your hardware configuration or the software install here, you run into any problems whatsoever, go to our website, objectfirst.com, click the support tab and get in contact with customer support. And we will be more than happy to walk you through any trouble spots you might hit along the way. Absolutely, Anthony. And where we're at now, as we mentioned it earlier here, you're actually going to set up your cluster IP and you're also going to give it a cluster name. And this is good for identifiers. Once you log on to the web interface, it'll actually show you the cluster name. It'll show you, you know, everything about the node or multiple nodes such as disks, health and things of the sort. So in this case, uh, coincidentally, we're using Ootby again and we're gonna give it a cluster IP. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this single IP is what you're going to use to add it into Veeam. You know, as a final step here, you're simply going to harden it with your own password 
so that you know you have an opportunity to really elevate that security. And this is going to be the cluster administrator password. And you're going to use this username and password in the next step, which we have an entire uh, separate video for. But I do want to call out this screen here. So as you can see, we've gone through the configuration. It's completed successfully. And you have a couple of different IP addresses on the screen. Now, like Matt mentioned earlier, the S3 endpoint, while the IP address is the same with the web UI address, they have different ports on the end. The endpoint is what we're going to use to connect and configure our backup repository to Veeam and the web user uh, Interface address is what we're going to connect to with that username and password you just set to go through our final steps of configuration for the object first OOP node. Absolutely. And if you care to jot down the serial number and model number of your unit, that's also uh, coincidentally available for you right here on the screen. So one final thing, Anthony, before we wrap up is the ability to either enable or disable telemetry service. And what telemetry services enables us to do at Object First is if your OOP appliance ever suffers a critical event, such as a hardware or hard drive failure, support can be proactively notified of these events to expedite the shipment of replacement parts. So so if Ootby does indeed have internet access, be sure to leave this turned on. Although if you do have Ootby in a hardened environment with no outside internet access, you could disable this if you like. And with that, Anthony, the cluster's configured and we're ready to go. So, I think so. What's, what's the next step? Next step, we're gonna go through the final configuration through the web user interface and get hooked up into Veeam backup and replication. Right on. So make sure you guys stay tuned, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you hadn't already. We're going to continue this playlist and be sure to check out the next step, which you'll find in the card located at the top right of your screen that shows you exactly how to bring it into Veeam so that you can start leveraging it for your backup data. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode.